Good morning and welcome. I like the alarm going off just at the beginning. That's perfect. It, that was a call, by the way. It wasn't an accident. That was on purpose to say, hey, everybody, we started. So, um, we're about to uh, hear a psalm which begins with praise the Lord. And I thought rather than just diving straight into that psalm, I thought I'd just ask a little question. How are you? Now, really, how are you? Are you ready to say, hey, praise the Lord? One is, you don't have to be, by the way, but praise God. Praise God for our encourager and prayer warrior, I only hear. Sometimes we can go through a mixed range of experiences and emotions, but actually, we always go through a time like that. As I reflect on my own week, I can see some highs and some lows, some, um, uh, some great experiences, um, some great time with the Lord, but also times of, yeah, but I got that wrong, or this kind of cloud hanging over. And so when we're like that, we don't really feel, or perhaps it even feels fake to say, hey, let's get up and praise the Lord. But it's an intention that the Lord calls us to have. It's a decision that he calls us to make. Not necessarily because we feel joyful and good, but because the Lord is joyful and good. And he invites us into this place with him. So when we share in this psalm, it's not simply a false expectation. It's not being forced to ourselves, saying, well, actually, I'm not feeling that good right now. It's a decision to say, in the Lord, in the Lord, I find peace and joy, and it is him that I will call on. So let us uh, hear this psalm, Psalm 111, the first four verses. After the first line, I'd like everyone to say, please, hallelujah. So the first line is praise the Lord, and the response is hallelujah. When we get to the end, which finishes about the Lord being gracious and compassionate, the response is hallelujah, amen. Have you got that? First line, hallelujah. Final line, hallelujah, amen. Just so that we are all taking part in this. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I will extol the Lord with all of my heart. In the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. For great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered, thought about by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And well remembered. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord for your compassion. We thank you, Lord, for your graciousness, your, your mercy towards us. As we have this time of intentional focus and gathering, may you reignite our hearts and minds with compassion. May you reignite our connection with you, reminding us of who we are in relationship with you, a precious son, a precious daughter. Renew us, Lord. And may we be renewed through your presence. Father God, Son and Holy Spirit, we praise you. We choose to praise you. And we, we choose for our praises to be heard be rising up to your throne room. 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's cement that into our hearts and minds. If you are able to stand, please do so. We're going to sing together, Praise is Rising. Amen. Please do sit down. We have some birthdays to celebrate for this week. Uh, for Marion, for Rima and Margaret. And as we have just been singing, come have your way among us and Hosanna. Let us pray that into the lives of Marion, Rima and Margaret. Father God, we thank you for each of them. Father God, we want your name to be praised in their lives so that they know your presence, they know your compassion, so that they are able then to share your presence and compassion with others. We thank you for your love for them. We thank you for the connections that you have made with family and friends their brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we pray for these three sisters in Christ. Do you bless them, Lord, and be with them on their birthdays this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, a few little notices uh, too. 
Um, now this coming week we have um, the first of our summer pastoral community groups. It's on Tuesday evening. We start at quarter to eight and finish at quarter past nine. There is a Teams link for it. If you do not have that Teams link, please send me a message. You can text me. You can phone me, and if I missed the call, we just leave a voice found message, or you can phone the office phone, and again, leave a message there. But let us know, let me know, if you don't have that link, so we can, uh, can forward that link to you. Of course, you can also come in person. So we'll be meeting here in this building. We'll either be in room five, the room next to the uh, office, or in room three, one of the larger rooms off the lobby. So that's this Tuesday evening, the pastoral community group. And I look forward to sharing that time with you. On Wednesday, we continue this week with our community kitchen and with the food bank provision for that. The um, Brent Food Bank, uh, part of our team, have said that uh, they need uh, more help in terms of the products. There has been a decrease uh, in the um, giving of food generally, uh, I guess as we are all um, uh, dealing with rising prices. But if we are able to afford it, or you know someone that you think, actually, they might be able to share, then uh, let's do that. There's, on the notice sheet, uh, it tells us there's actually been a 25% increase in demand. And so even a small item every now and then helps. Uh, on the list, um, they've asked particularly for the long-life milk, for various types of beans, tinned tomatoes, pulses, uh, tinned meats, vegetable soup, pasta sauce, and toiletries, toilet rolls, uh, shower gel, soap, uh, that kind of thing, and indeed uh, nappies size four to seven. So there's quite a range of uh, requests there. So please, um, if you're able to help in that way, uh, there's an opportunity uh, to do that, and please do so. And in fact, just um, below that on a notice sheet, I noticed that uh, Amanda has put a reading from Romans 8.32. Will he, meaning the Lord, not also graciously give all things? God will provide all things you need. And it reminds me, actually, of a story. It might be one you're familiar with, of a guy who uh, is in his house and uh, he discovers that a flood is coming. There's been a storm raging. You might know the Bible story to do with, with Noah. And the, the rain is coming down, the floods are coming up, and he says, Lord, Lord, save me. And the water continues, and he has to abandon the ground floor, and he goes up to the next floor. But still the water continues, and he says, Lord, Lord, save me. And he has to go up into the roof space, and he breaks a hole in the roof as he has to come out onto the roof and sit on the roof as the waters are still rising. And as he does that, and he can see about him, some of his neighbours come up in one of those little inflatable dinghies that they uh, use on the beach. And they say, hey, let's just call the guy Dave. Hey, Dave, come in. No, no, it's fine. I have prayed for the Lord to save me. The Lord's going to save me. You, you keep going. I don't want to get in that. It doesn't look very safe to me. It looks a bit wobbly. That's, I'm, I'm not safe. You, you go. That's fine. That's fine. And then a little uh, further on, the, uh, the fire brigade come by, and they're in a rigid inflatable. They're in one of these bigger, but you know all the ones that we see, we think, oh, I'd like a go in that. And they come down. Ah, oh, hey, guy on the roof. Come on, come on. Let's say, oh, no, 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 you're the fire brigade. You're, you're, you've got other people to save. Go save them. I've prayed to the Lord. He'll save me. And um, got time. You, you go. You go. Save other people. And the water's still rising. And a Coast Guard helicopter comes by. And a guy calls down. Hey, you're right. Do you want to lift up? Oh, no, no, no. I'm scared of heights. No way am I going in that thing. No, on, and get up there on a dangly rope. No, 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 I'm, I'm too fearful of that. 
I'd rather sit here and wait because I have prayed to the Lord for him to save me. And so the Coast Guard carry on. There are other people to save. Sadly, poor Dave, he drowns. Everyone say, oh, poor Dave. He was so hopeful, wasn't he, in the Lord? And he sees St. Peter. Ah, oh, Peter, tell, tell me, you, you, you've experienced disappointments and stuff in your life. Tell me, why didn't the Lord save me? And Peter says, he sent his neighbour. No, 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 that was inflatable. He sent, he sent your neighbour. He sent the fire brigade. He sent the coast guard. You rejected them all. And it's a reminder that God provides in a multitude of ways. Let us not despise the small things. Let us see and look to see God at work so that we may be more grateful. So thank you, Amanda, for putting, not the joke. Yeah, actually, thank you, Amanda, for not putting that joke in the notice sheet, but putting something um, else in the notice sheet, that God will provide all things. Um, anything else now I've semi-diverted from the notice sheet that I should cover? Sarah's looking at me meaningfully. <laughs> Of course you can. And now someone who knows properly how to give notices. <laughs> no, not really, because I've not prepared it in advance. Um, bear with me, hold on. Dates for the diary. Um, I can't remember how many weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks' time? Two weeks' time. Two weeks' time will be our next fellowship meal, and it's going to be a barbecue. And part of the reason why it's going to be a barbecue is because we have got lots of sausages and uh, chicken drumsticks from City Harvest. And don't panic, we have been giving them out like mad, but there were loads, trust me, loads and loads. So we're having a barbecue. Um, it would be really great if a couple of people could help volunteer to do the barbecuing. That would be really great. I appreciate that on the day we can just grab a couple of people, but it might reassure me slightly if I knew that we had some people that were happy to help so if you could let me know one way or another i think we have one sarah because i've got oh okay cool um and there will then be a couple of others in august um times for us to get together to eat together we're also going to do things like get out the table tennis table and the snooker table and board games and jigsaws and things like that so an opportunity to do activities together um so that we can spend time together i think that was all I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you for showing us how to give notices. I would say I'll try better on that, but I have a feeling that I'll never be that good at doing it because, you know, that's how it is. Um, so what I'd like us to do is move into a time of prayer, partly noticing the notices. Sorry. Bit of a bad pun, that one, isn't it? Um, that was unintentional, honestly. Um, there's an opportunity for... In fact, no, we're not going to do that. I've read the programme. This is good, isn't it? I'm so professional. So perfect. I'm hoping that this gives hope to everybody else. Excellent. Excellent. What we're supposed to do before we go into this time of prayer, is have another worship song. Uh, we're going to sing together Waymaker. I think the worship team are going to switch places. We're also going to take up uh, the offering during this uh, song. Again, as with the first song, if you are able to stand, uh, please do so. It uh, helps us to be freer in our worship. But if you're not able to stand, that's absolutely fine. Uh, please worship uh, as you are, but do it intentionally. Make this time of worship intentional. Okay.
it is and it was partly following on from the story that Roger told because as I looked out and I have the advantage of being able to see everyone from up here and I was thinking about you are here moving in this place and I thought yeah actually God is here in each one of you and he works through us you know it's not just about his spirit kind of zapping people it's also about us being willing to talk about him to be willing to help someone to show love or say a kind word that's how he's moving because his spirit is in us isn't that amazing amen, amen. fantastic thank you so Amen. So, Lord, we thank you that you are moving among us. Thank you, Lord, that your spirit works with our spirit. So, Lord, we reopen our spirits to you. As we heard last week, we have freedom in you. We turn over our soul, our human desire to you so that through your spirit, our spirit will lead our soul and not the other way around. Father, thank you that you are everything. May we recognize your presence in our lives. May we rejoice and celebrate it. May we have the confidence to work out your presence in our lives. Because even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. Your presence is with us. Remind us of that, Lord. Remind us of that. Amen. And Lord, we thank you that in that spirit of generosity, in that spirit of thankfulness, we bring our offerings, our offerings of praise and thanksgiving, our offerings 
um, financially. We pray your blessings, Lord, upon all of these offerings. We pray that you, Lord, will work through the offerings made to you so that they benefit our community, so that your kingdom is a visible reality in our communities. Amen. Amen. So let's continue in that uh, reflection of prayer. Uh, what's on your heart? Who's on your heart? Let's pray for God's spirit to be at work in others. Let's pray for God's spirit to be at work in our communities, in nations, and um, all around the world. It's our opportunity to share. I will lead some, but let's have some voices. What's your own experience? Voice it. Uh, voice it to the Lord and let us join with you uh, in your praise, your thanks, your request, uh, whatever it may be. Father, thank you that through your spirit, through, through your son, we're able to come and be in your presence. Thank you, you call us your children, your sons and daughters. So as your children, we kind of metaphorically come and sit on your lap right now. We recognise your hands holding us. We recognise your presence enveloping us. Lord, we recognise that this is a delightful opportunity to hear from you, to share with you. So Lord, move in our hearts. Amen. Lord, I recognise um, that uh, a, fr a frustration, you know the frustration I've been sharing with you this, Lord, that uh, we've been praying for a, for a document to um, reach um, one of our team, one of the DHM team in Lviv, an important document. We are praying that it would arrive this week and I've been uh, keeping an eye and frustrated that we hadn't seen it arrive. But thank you, Lord, that... Um, for the boost that you've given me as today I saw from the tracking information that actually arrived in Kiev on um, Thursday night even though I didn't know it at that time and Lord we pray for its safe passage to Lviv and Lord we pray that as that's received we pray that other practicalities and administration is released so that our team are released to practically help and bring the humanitarian aid to the communities that need it. Amen. Lord, you know the pain, the heart-wrenching agony mm. of losing someone close, someone you love so much. We know that when Lazarus died, you cried. And you know what it feels like to lose a loved one. And I pray that you will come and hold in your arms your, your loved ones who are grieving at this moment. I pray that you will lift them up, that you will bring comfort to those families, and you will give them hope. Thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you in our times of loss. Amen. Amen.
my family's uh, <coughs> friends, some people that we grew up with since I was a young boy. Unfortunately, um, one of their members was um, killed recently, mm. and he was um, a big part of the community up in mm -hmm. Stevenage. And they, they did a lot in terms of trying to show awareness for knife crime. And um, he was a sweet, loving boy, just in the wrong place at the wrong time, I think. Mm. But I just need you, Lord, to mm. open the eyes of these youth, Lord, this generation, to really have that mm. thought in their mind, that doubt, if they was going to do something they shouldn't, Lord, or even if they are not mm. right, in their mind, body, and spirit, Lord, if there's a way we can reach them, yeah. just to get them to just stop or think before they do anything. Because everyone's choice is their mm -hmm. own. But if they know that yes. they're doing something wrong, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe that would be just the little hint they need not to go through it. And it seems to be going on a lot in different boroughs, different areas. So I pray, Lord, if you could be able to open the eyes, not just of them, but their parents and or friends yes. or people who are older who can see that these children are going through a difficult time. Mm. But you'll be able to help us just to be there for them, even if it's just a little word, Lord, or just to see if you're okay or not. I don't know. But these children do need some guidance. They do need the, those barriers, Lord, because it's... It's sort of going through mm. a bit of a hard time on the streets, Lord, everywhere. So I pray, Lord, your spirit of loving, caring, and understanding can flow through us. We can communicate, and we can probably do something about it. Mm -hmm. But please bless the churches, Lord, who are part of the community. Maybe we can do something as churches different all around, where we can just try and get through to them and, mm -hmm. and do something, Lord. But I pray, Lord, if you can bless us, Lord, and, and see if we could do what we can, Lord. Thank you, Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Have mercy on that family, Lord. Yes, Lord. And may this young man's death not be in vain. Lord, we thank you for Chris's knee operation, that mm. it went successfully. Amen. And we do lift her up and pray that you will help her to cope with the pain that she is experiencing now as she recovers. We thank you for the medical staff who are looking after her. And we pray for a quick recovery. We pray too for those who have uh, contracted COVID recently, pray again for them that they will receive healing and not have it too badly. And we think, Lord, of the many people who have not really recovered from COVID and now have what's called long COVID. We know that there are many around us who are still suffering and who need a healing hand upon them. Lord, we pray that you will bless them now and bring healing to each one. Amen. 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 Father God, for the prayers shared, voiced, for the prayers kept within our hearts and shared directly with you. Lord, we pray, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, before the young people come up, can I have all of the young people up here, please? Including this little one, you can bring her, you can come with her. You count, you count as being young. If anyone is not as old as Moses, you know, we can all consider. Just, just uh, I want you to crowd in a little bit. This is, in, uh, this is partly in response to Marshall sh sharing. Father God, I thank you for these young people. 
I thank you, Lord, for the talents that they have, some of which I'm only just recently discovering. I thank you, Lord, that you love them, that you so love them, that your spirit is at work within them. Bless them, Lord. May they know that you are with them. May they know that they are precious in your sight, sons and daughters of you, of your kingdom. May you, Lord, place your hedge of protection around them. May you, Lord, encourage them, continue to inspire them, continue to be working in their talents, their skills. And may they work in partnership with you, Lord. May their hearts be turned towards you this day and every day. Our precious children, Lord, are your precious children, for we are all your children. Bless them. Bless their families. Bless their friends. May they be a blessing to themselves. May they be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, now you can go to your session. I'm not sure if we'll need that again, but I've put it there just in case. Our beginning reading this morning for our sermon focus continues our, we're week two of three of our little faith series. Last week we looked at faith and freedom. This week we look at faith and compassion. Just before we share this reading. Let me just show you a link from James. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom because justice without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Being compassionate is a command. Zechariah 7, 9. This is what the Lord Almighty said. Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. <coughs> compassion is a command. We learned last week that the law of freedom works through the adoption relationship of us being adopted by the Father as his sons and daughters that I have reaffirmed with us this morning. And all of us who are children of God should act in the freedom of his spirit, which means we are seeking God's spirit to lead our decisions and our attitudes and not our own nature. And what the Apostle James is saying is that when properly understood, this faith leads to freedom, and when properly understood, this freedom leads to a compassionate faith. And in so doing, we are then able to comply with the command. I remember a conversation with some other students when I was at senior school. And what they were doing was talking about their dads, the, the type of work they were doing and the sort of earnings they got. It was a bit of a showy-offy type conversation. They were proud of their dads. They were happy to share of some of the nice things they had or indeed could do. Why? Because they could afford it. They had a good relationship with dad. Great! 
I was happy for them. Have you got family or friends who just seem to be that bit more blessed than you are? Perhaps you have family or friends that they don't share it in a boastful way and they actually talk about how blessed they are, how much they appreciate what God has given them. And they try to make sure God is given the glory. And we say, hey, that's nice, isn't it? Great, we're pleased for them. And they continue to be blessed. And they continue to seem to just be coping better than we are, to have more than we are, to be more spiritual than we are. And we think, great, I'm happy for you. <laughs> because if we're honest, there becomes a bit of a tipping point where our happiness for them becomes a bit of a grudge. Because what happens is we think, yeah, Great, you're blessed. But do you know what? Honestly, I can't help feeling a bit of a pang of annoyance or just a slight resentment because I am struggling with something. And we all go through that. Their being blessed reminds us of where we think we are not blessed. In the public space, what does that look like? And why do I ask that question? Because what is going on internally eventually gets externalised. And we can say, yeah, great, I'm happy for such and such in uh, the public square. But secretly, we're struggling a bit with it. And then as we look at various other people groups, we think, ah, yeah, I understand what they're going through. But over a period of time, we get a little bit compassion weary, shall we say. So think of all the big stuff that's happening on the world stage that we've heard about. Think of the bombings that happened in Syria, communities destroyed. Think of the ongoing troubles in Afghanistan and how the Western powers have withdrawn, having toppled what we saw as a, um, a, a bad leadership, which indeed it was, but having left something of a vacuum. Think of Ukraine. I'm sure we're all getting weary of that news. And we begin to kind of go, yeah, it's great, but I've got my own stuff going on. We begin to lose our compassion, not because we want to, but because we struggle to hold a compassionate nature. How do we then keep this command of administering true justice, of showing mercy and compassion to one another when we know that we ourselves are flawed? Well, actually... The fact that we ourselves are flawed is part of the key to this. All the characteristics that we ask to show, ask to show are in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. He, he shows compassion and kindness. Indeed, if I can just find my reading... There's an there's a experience that Moses had. And Moses proclaims, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. The Lord is compassionate. How will his people be? Personally in the, and in the public square. I hope I'm showing it's a bit of a struggle. And what we need as this key is to remember that we ourselves are flawed and that helps us actually to 
when we recognise that, to be compassionate towards another. We can, we can understand the other's position much more when it's something that we have experienced. But we need a self-awareness. We need a self-awareness for our own successes, our failures, our own characters. Now I know I'm speaking to a group of people. We already know we're not perfect. And I'm speaking to a group of people who desire to show compassion. And I am thankful to you all. But as I've said, I also know that all of us can struggle with this, and even occasionally to ourselves. So within this broad family of God, what sort of things happen? What are the obstacles? Well, we can lose our compassion with the other because the issue is something that we don't see as an issue. Perhaps we've overcome it ourselves with ease and we think, oh, what's your problem? This is easy. So we lose our compassion. We can lose our compassion because the issue triggers deep memories within us to which we react badly. And so we don't react well to that person, not because really of what they're sharing as such, but because there's some internal stuff that we haven't worked out yet. It may be an issue where actually we've been trying to help for some time, but the other doesn't get it. Maybe it's just something they don't have a talent for, or maybe there's something else going on that is the real cause. And so we become frustrated. Maybe... We figure the other is not just unable, but also unwilling. And sometimes we can all be unwilling to engage with an issue or to engage well with an issue, refusing to see the other's point of view. And the big one, maybe there is unforgiveness in our own hearts, whether toward the other, within ourselves, or within a particular issue with which we struggle. And unforgiveness forms a wall around our hearts, slowly turning them into stone. So I've presented you the command, and I've presented you lots of obstacles. It's not really that positive right now, is it? <laughs> to underpin this, John, speaking to the early church, said this, Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or a sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister, whom they have seen, they cannot love God, whom they have not seen. How are we doing with that? This is a bit of a sober assessment to start with, and I can see a few glum faces. But we need to hear this. We need to understand that to have compassion, we need to work on our relationship with the Lord first, who loves us, who is compassionate and merciful towards us. We cannot have compassion outside of that relationship because outside of that relationship are all of those obstacles that I've already shared. Let me give an example of that kind of attitude. There is a captain of a large destroyer and he's sailing along and the sonar operator says, hey, we're getting a, uh, we've got a blip on the sonar and we're getting the message in. Okay, play me the message. Hey, captain, whatever the signature of that ship is, I require you to change course, says this voice. Please head 20 degrees to the north. And the captain's like, whoa, you're having a laugh. We are a big warship. We're a destroyer. We are not changing course. You have to change course. We're the big boy here. We're the big player. You change course. I am not going to. The voice repeats. Captain, I require you to change course. Please avert your course to 25 degrees north. What are you talking about? I have just told you. You change course. I am right. This is 
a big ship. We know what we are doing. Do you know who you're talking to? A third time the voice comes back. But Captain, I require you to change course. 35 degrees to the north. So each time the course has to be changed by a greater amount. And yet again the captain replies, don't you know who I am? I am the captain of this great warship. You change course, we don't have to. And the voice comes back, Captain, I fully appreciate that you are the captain of a large warship. I fully appreciate that your ship is great and powerful and worth millions of dollars. But let me tell you who I am. I am the lighthouse keeper. <laughs> Sometimes we can get so focused in on we are right that we forget that we are also vulnerable. We forget the position of the other. We don't try to understand the position of another. Um, I guess recently and not too long ago, I remember some conversations I've had to do with debate and understanding the other's point of view. In this society, there is a crisis of compassion. Did you know that? There is a crisis of compassion in this society. Opinions are shared. And they are shared saying, I am right. This is what you should think. And we lose the ability to understand the other because we are so focused on what we think is right. What a debate does, what a discussion does between us is seek to get closer to the truth. A proper discussion and debate, especially when we have an opinion that doesn't agree with someone else's opinion, is not to force our opinion on the other. The purpose of the discussion is to help us understand the other person's viewpoint and it should be the same for them so that we can get closer to the actual truth. To live out this command of compassion requires close relationship with God it requires a vulnerability with God and with each other, and it requires this ongoing discipleship, this commitment to the relationship with God and our brothers and sisters in Christ. For the obstacles are huge, but the outcome of doing that is greater still. For compassion is also a crown. In Psalm 103, verse 4, He, the Lord, redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. So it's not just something we have to work at in relationship. It's a crown placed on us by the Lord. It's to be prized. It's wholesome. It keeps our faith alive. And this underscores that compassion isn't an add-on. Compassion isn't a choice where we bring compassion under the control of our own human desires. But it's meant as a crown of life that signifies we are both blessed with God's compassion, as we've already heard, and charged to administer it. It's a good thing. Compassion is so, so important. Let us not have a crisis of compassion in our faith but let us seek to work with the Lord of saying, hey, you loved me in my own imperfections. In fact, God loves us and calls us into his presence, already knowing what we're like, already knowing our faults and failures, which means that when we are with the other, especially with our brother and sister in Christ, the same applies. He loves them in all our faults and failures. So it's a decision. 
Are we going to love them because the Lord loves them? Are we going to seek to hear where they are coming from? Are we going to seek to understand perhaps what underpins their opinion? And so that lovingly we can share where we're at and together we can find God's will. Are we the captain of the ship or are we the lighthouse keeper? The good news which Micah shares, speaking to the Lord, says, you will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl, hurl, chuck, throw away, bin all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Compassion is part of the freedom that we have in Christ. It is not easy. And I've purposely phrased this to show it's not easy. And why have I done that? Because when we struggle with it, let's not beat ourselves up too much, but accept, well, actually, do you know what? This is quite a difficult thing. If we were doing a test or exam, and we've worked really, really hard at it, and we get 70%, we go, oh, oh, I worked so hard, and I only got 70% but we got 70%, so we might go after a bit of time, oh, that wasn't so bad. There's some good stuff I can learn. If we've worked really hard and we got 40% or 30% or 20%, we go, oh, disaster, why didn't I get it? And perhaps we give up. But actually, we've got friends to draw alongside us who can say, hey, let's, let's look at that. Why was it so let, let, let me come alongside you, because actually this is not an easy thing. Can we com be compassionate toward the other in that way? Let us pray that Father God will work in our hearts, because where there is a crisis of compassion in society, where opinions are shared and it's, this is, this is the opinion I refuse to listen to another opinion, let us be different. Let us be that lighthouse keeper. Let us be that calm, quiet voice that says, hey, help me understand your opinion and let me please share with you about where God is at in this relationship. We can much more easily do that within the family of Christ because being Christ-centred, we have the same mindset. It is much harder in the public square to do that. So to do that in the public square, my advice is to be praying for that person before you have that sort of conversation. That person you are struggling to um, love. That person who winds you up. That person who just seems so more blessed than you. That person who doesn't seem to try. Recognise that God loves them and say, hey Lord, you love them, bless them Lord, and love them on my behalf. And as we do that, we gradually learn to love them. We gradually learn to have compassion so that we may be able to then work together. I'm going to leave it at that slightly sobering point, um, but I'm going to remind us of that Micah reading. Lord, you will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all of our iniquities, our bad stuff, into the depths of the sea. Lord, we thank you and praise you for it. Help us, Lord, to recognise that that is what you are doing in our lives. And that as you are working with us in our imperfections, so we have opportunity to work with others in their imperfections. May we work with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we be vulnerable to one another. May we commit to discipling one another with you. As the church, as a local congregation, in a small group, in a prayer triplet or a prayer duo where we can be that bit more vulnerable with more sensitive issues. 
Lord, give us hearts of compassion. Chip away the hearts of stone. Release us into your freedom and your compassion, Lord. Amen. From that, we move into a time uh, into communion. Because this relationship is made possible through Christ. Hear these words from Lamentations. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts as well as our hands to God in heaven. Let us all pray together. The words will be on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Amen. We're going to have a reflective worship song. Feel free to stand, sit, kneel, whatever uh, position would help your reflective worship. And we'll sing together. Thank you for saving me.
because there is one loaf. We, though we are many, are one body. And it's in the one loaf that we all partake. Let us come with our brokenness, with our failures and our successes. Let us eat together as a sign of being one body, as a sign of our commitment to both God and each other. We're going to pass the... Uh, what do we got? The bread and wine around. If you take of the wafer, please also take a separate cup. If you're going to use the individual um, cups, they have both the wafer and the um, wine in the one. And uh, just hold on to the bread once you've got it, because actually today we're going to eat together. So the broken bread is a sign of Jesus' body broken for us. And as we eat together today, we remember that we ourselves are broken before him. But he makes us whole. Whole as an individual and whole in our communion together as we are a part of the body that is the church, that is Jesus church so let us eat together and remember his body broken for us amen In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the wine and said, Drink this, all of you, because this is my blood poured out for you. His blood is a sign of the promise, the covenant, the renewing or the beginning of the renewing of all things. And as we drink it, we drink it being reminded that we are adopted into his family sons and daughters of the king. Amen.
Father God, we thank you for what you have done for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice for us, for pouring yourself out, for your reconciling work, for dying for us and being made alive again. And we celebrate that we are made alive in you. Amen. So as we, we're going to have a blessing in a minute, but as we go out, remember that the closer we are with God and intention our relationship, the, um, it means that the movement that we have to be faithful and compassionate is less. The longer that we pull away from the Lord and we allow our own desires and opinions and and way, rather than seeking his, the harder it is to change course and come back to him. Let us remember, we're all on this. We all are together in it. So let's be compassionate towards one another this week. Let us remember his grace and compassion upon us. So this blessing then. May the Father of life pour out his grace and compassion on us, May we notice his hand in everything that we do and be strengthened by his spirit to live in compassion and grace. May the Father of life pour out his grace and compassion on us. Amen. Thank you for your patience.